Okay. And we're still letting people in. That's awesome. So hello, everyone. Uh, just as I said, I, I am going to be recording. And the good news is, is that I took some time and I set up a YouTube channel. Um, and I'll post that link in the uh, and I admit someone else here. I'll post that link in the chat a little bit later on. Um, I actually searched it based on its name. It's called Life Force Canada Education Think Tank. I don't know why I called it that. But um, anyways, you can't find it. So without the link, you're going to have trouble finding it. So it would be fantastic if everybody took a moment and subscribed, because I think that's the only way that you show up when they search, I guess. So right now there's two subscribers, me and Karen, that's it. So, but there's nothing on there um, because it's really going to be a platform basically just to um, have these recordings of our meetings. I've had a lot of people say, oh, I just can't make it at that time. So anyways, it's good. Other people can get involved that way. So my name is Norma Jean. I think most of you have met me before. Um, this, is Life for, this is a Life Force Canada education think tank. Life Force Canada is more than just education though. Uh, our mission is to protect our freedom and our rights. And we're a platform that is made up of Canadians from coast to coast who have volunteered their time and energy to create the Canadian Restoration Plan, which is an empowered future for all of us. So there are nine pillars in Life Force Canada and education is just one of them. But I would say ultimately um, education is long-term the most important pillar because in my opinion, everything, everything else in life come back to, comes back to how we educate and raise our children. Brian, never mind. <laughs> to give you an idea who I am and why I'm so passionate about education, uh, I've been an educator for nearly 20 years with my focus being on children with special needs, learning differences such as dyslexia, uh, and behavior intervention for those many kids that struggle with self-regulation. But more importantly, I'm a mom and both my boys were the square pegs that didn't quite fit in the round holes in the current education model. But when I say current, I don't just mean the last 20 years. Um, my brother, who just turned 61 this year, is a highly intelligent man with severe dyslexia. And his was an absolutely miserable school existence. Um, and he dropped out, defeated at 15 with a big old chip on his shoulder. And unfortunately, he never really recovered from the damage to his self-esteem and his self-confidence. Um, abused himself, he, he became the abuser uh, of others, but particularly of himself. And to this day, he still struggles with addictions and feelings of self-loathing. And unfortunately, that can be a common story. Those kids that don't fit in and don't succeed in the current school system, and there are a lot, um, often struggle later in life. But it doesn't have to be that way because these are all kids can be successful. And you know, even in my business, that is one of my mottos: is that all kids can succeed, and it's just how we present to them. So. I'm very familiar and deeply concerned with what's happening in the public school system. And it's why I stepped into this position as a think tank facilitator. So the education think tank was created to support all of us, whether we're parents, a teacher, administrator, support staff, or just simply someone who cares about the future of our children and the future of uh, humanity. And our main focus right now uh, are one, supporting parents and educators who are exiting the public school system and two, a rather lofty one, is to reimagine what education can be. And I think that we all realize that it's long overdue for us to move away from an outdated one-size-fits-all model of education. And to do this, we need to reach out to the talented and creative thinkers that we know reside in all our communities across the nation. We need a new vision. We need to have conversations to imagine what that new vision would look like. And we're looking for creative ideas and to find solutions. And we don't necessarily need to recreate the wheel, right? There's lots of new and wonderfully successful education models out there right now. Um, Simon Wolfson's, who's not here this evening, but usually is, his um, Evergreen Leadership Academy is one. Uh, I'm super excited to have arranged to meet uh, a lady named Tammy Villiers, who is the co-founder of the Star Hero Academy in Ontario. She, it sounds like an amazing place. 
And I've also recently reached out to the Centner Academy in Florida, uh, who has this ability leveled as opposed to grade leveled model that offers exciting and engaging cross curricular experiences and conscious and mindful practices like even the little preschoolers and kindergartners practice meditation. I love it. So you know, do you know any of these types of schools? Have you already heard of something like this? Maybe we could invite someone into our think tank that could add their experience and their ideas. And then how can we take actionable steps, even small ones, towards creating something amazing? For our so do we have any new faces here tonight? I, th I think that we do, actually. Um, if we do, it would be great if you could just introduce yourself and tell us where you are and what brought you here this evening. Uh, Nota, I wonder if I'm saying your name right. It's a very short form of a full word called Notador. Notador, that's cool. And, uh -huh. Welcome. Thank you. My name is Jim Murray and I am in Ontario. And uh, I was just going to visit each one of the think tanks uh, and see what's going on. I'm new to Life Force, so uh, that's where I'm at. Uh, the explanation of not a door. Okay. I was in the garage door business for over 40 years. I am officially retired, but I still dabble. And I had a yacht, a boat. Uh, on the south end of Lake Simcoe and uh, we had to name it and uh, so I came up with this label not a door because it has several meanings knots of course are nautical miles mm -hmm. it's the fact that I was on the boat and it wasn't a door so I enjoyed it <laughs> <laughs> so there were several it was uh it was it was fun. It was good while it lasted. The girlfriend that I had at the time while I had that boat, um, she had a, a young fella with, uh, as it turned out, Asperger's syndrome. And I learned an awful lot through her about him. She has since passed away. The boy, when I had him at my house, he was 12. And that lasted for about six years. And then uh, he is now 34 and doing fairly well on his own. He had a lot of stuff to learn uh, in growing up after she passed. And that was about eight years ago. Okay. She, mo she okay. molly coddled him a little bit too much. Yeah. And didn't teach him the stuff that he needed. There's, but there's there was a lot a, of that happens huge huge failing in the education system i don't know if you've ever heard of an outfit called blue hills academy it was on bloomington road south of aurora in the oak ridges area and uh he was taken there at nine years old and they did him absolutely zero good no benefit whatsoever um, but then once she found out uh, the terminology, Asperger's syndrome being at the time one of 360 types of aut uh, autism, uh, she started studying and looking it up, and she ended up knowing a lot more about it than most of the doctors that she went to. She had to educate them. But it was a fascinating thing because uh, I've been more of a mechanically minded being in the graduate or business and not into education and not into uh, any form of uh, health uh, benefit to anybody else. So. So can you please tell me again, your, your first name again, Jim, Jim yeah. Murray. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for, for joining us tonight, Jim. And thank you for that story too. Um, it's very common for parents to of kids with special needs to be a little bit protective that way. And uh, I don't. Yeah. I don't, and I mean, it's the motherhood thing, right? So, it is. yeah. yeah. Mother sure. <laughs> but they are, you know, kids like that are just as capable of, of learning and being successful as, you know, your typical kids. So, um, 
very interesting with that Asperger's and I you probably are quite aware of many, many other people have it. I, I'm told Bill Gates has it. Um, and super intelligent people, super yeah. intelligent. Yeah, certainly makes the sense. boy had a great, huge difficulty with math, I guess, with the brain and the, the two different lobes. Uh, <laughs> he was an artist and he could draw um characters uh, you know like you would see on uh, some of these games video games mm -hmm. fantastic and they did it all just from his imagination That's but great. math no and he says i don't need to learn math he says i'll just use a calculator so <laughs> yeah, i tried to teach him it didn't work <laughs> well some some people that's just not the way their brains work right but brian did you have something you wanted to add yeah, forgive me, uh, Jim, but uh, this is an opening for a bad joke that I know. <clears throat> when is a door not a door? When it's a jar. Uh -uh. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for that. I'll, I'll put that one in my uh, resume. <laughs> I had not heard that one before. Okay, the next time you put your hand up, I'm ignoring you. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, Crystal, uh, is this your first time? I think so, hey? Yeah, it is my first time. Um, I was asked to come to this meeting um, because we have a group of people right now. I'm in Calgary and I'm a teacher as well, uh, special needs. <clears throat> and due to just, we kind of, we kind of knew that these mandates were coming and stuff. And so we were looking at other ways that we could uh, teach children because I know a lot of parents are going to want to pull their kids or are pulling their kids for many reasons. So uh, myself and a few co-workers and now we've connected with some people in Edmonton as well and uh, we're starting a little business I guess uh, called Freedom Teachers and what we are basically doing is we're going to offer support via Google Classroom and then some people are going to be doing in-home pods, depending on everyone's situation, um, <clears throat> to parents who are homeschooling. Um, so there's like, for me, I'm still working full time, so it would be more like a tutoring gig, I guess, and offering support outside of my job for kids that or parents that need help with uh, homeschooling or just school in general and then some people will be opening pods so it's pretty it's moving pretty quick we're getting lots of people interested around here so we'll see how how it goes in the next few weeks that's wonderful and you've come to the right place because uh and i'm going to discuss it a little bit further um in detail a little bit later but we are about a week away from launching our education portal which uh marianne and our our tech gal have been working super hard on and it's to connect parents to educators and parents to others, homeschoolers and who wants to, people that want to have a pod or need one-to-one -one tutoring or want to be trained on how to teach this or they're looking for resources or they're looking for a teacher or a set of teachers or so, and it's free to make your posts on there. And, and um, yeah, we'd, we'd be really happy if you and your, your educator friends jumped on board with that. That would be great. Yeah, that would be awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight. We really appreciate it. No problem. Um, Marianne, your, your friend, I don't think she's been, have, has she been to one of our meetings yet? Have you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But not for a long time. Do you want to say hi? Hi. So I'm Stephanie Northcott. I'm a little uh, frazzled because we just got in this morning um, to Mexico. Uh, I was here a while ago. I have a son who's three and a half and I wanted to join this because at the time um, I was very keen on finding out what we can do for the future. I like some of the things that you see in Montessori and the Waldorf and other things that I've seen around. I haven't looked into that. It's Evergreen. Evergreen Leadership Academy. Yeah, the so Leadership cool, Academy. Yes. I just, I think it's fascinating, but I just, I know from my parents' experience as teachers that this this education system and what we've seen it all over it's just indoctrination and it's not teaching our children skills that they need life skills 
beyond, you know, the high school walls or university walls. So that's why I'm here. I'm here to see what I can do, what I can con could contribute, um, give ideas. I love to come up with ideas. Um, yes. I don't know how, how skilled I am at like, not like Marianne who's on the computer, but I yeah. do have some other skills and I'll just see where I can plug them in. And now, and now I remember you because you and your husband were coming up with amazing slogans, right, Marianne? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, when we were looking for taglines and stuff. So it's, I'm sorry about that. That okay. not, no, not. no worries. <laughs> um, thank you for for joining us on after such a long day. <laughs> Much appreciated. Um, okay, we're taking the jab. Um, I don't know about that, Noda. I think it's. Oops, here's some. Um, Mary, are you Mary McNaughton? Are you new to us tonight? Hi, Simon. Hi everyone. Mary, are you are you new to us this evening? I'm really bad with names. I'm much better with faces. Well, I'm not so great with faces either. Okay. All right. Well, thank you everybody for coming. That's really great. Um, so we wanted to give you a bit of an update on the portal. Uh, as you know, Marianne and Jade have been working really hard on creating the education portal that's going to connect parents to educators and vice versa. Um, Marianne and I have some copy work to finish off. Jade has a bit of techie stuff to do. Karen is working on a welcome video, but we are expecting it to be functional within about a week. Hey, Marianne. So do you, um, well, actually, before we get into that, uh, it would be really great if, if people started to promote it so that um, when it's up and functional, we can actually get people putting in posts um, so that when people are looking for stuff or when people are wanting to offer services, there's actually something there for, you know, people to find. Um, so it would be great if we could just sort of start putting that word out there. I am part of a lot of different uh, Facebook and Telegram, Telegram pages for homeschoolers, for educators, for freedom fighters. And, you know, I think almost everybody knows someone who's in a tough position right now. Um, and I'm kind of watching posts. And if anybody is making, you know, I don't know what to do, you know, I'm jumping in and saying, hey, there's something that you can do. Because what we don't want is people making um, decisions that, you know, without knowing that there's options and they're making their decisions based on fear and desperation and panic, right? So the whole idea was for us to have this service that's going to, um, offer people a bit of peace of mind and some support. So, I mean, that's, that's the whole function of it. So, you know, if, if you can spread the word, that would be great. And Simon, I just wanted you to know that I connected with Tammy at Star Hero, and I'm going to be chatting with her um, next week. So that's kind of exciting for me. Um, Marianne, do you want to, did you want to add to yeah, do you want to talk a little bit? I don't I mean maybe even want to bring the it up. I'm not sure if we're quite quite ready to share it yet, right? We have to kind of throw the copy in there first. Or yeah, did... Some copy a little bit more, but yeah. just if you guys know that it's coming and you get the word out saying, hey, we do have an educational portal. And if they search for life force education portal, they will find it. Um, yeah, I, I actually know that we will have that keyword so it goes through there. And um, it also has a section for educators who are creating materials or have courses or want to give coaching sessions to parents. It's really versatile and we're setting it up to be free and very <sighs> easy to use. It's almost like a Craigslist, almost like a, a dating site. <laughs> so it's looking great. We're really excited. And that's yeah. all I can think of to say right now. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if, uh, topic of discussion tonight, we could maybe start to think about what some of the steps we could take, um, to start both individually and as a group to try and build a basis to develop a vision for our educational future, right? So what are some of the steps we need to do to get to the point of doing roundtables? Should we be forming committees? And if so, you know, who would like to spearhead that and should we start by gathering info on other programs and fleshing out what do we want it to look like for us and start considering locations within your community and and just you know thoughts thoughts on that um, but before we get into that too um, we are going to need volunteers to help us with the education portal because everybody that makes um, 
that puts a post in, whether it's looking for services or offering services, uh, we actually have to vet it before we, we post it. So there's criteria that needs to be met. We need to make sure they've got this filled in and that filled in. And it's not going to be hard, but it is going to be, you know, time consuming. And um, it's, do you, do you want to explain how that works more, Marianne, or am I doing okay? You know, awesome. So my idea is, even if you have an hour extra per week, some people say, oh, we'd like to participate, but I'm just a mom. Well, that's perfect. If you're a mom or if you're just a living, breathing human being that can read an email post, perfect. <laughs> have some common sense. We're just looking for someone to look over a second set of eyes, to make sure the post looks good, looks legit, has all of, you know, no serious problems with it, and then to copy and paste it into our blog background. We are hoping to uh, be reaching out for some funding in the near future as well to help pay for uh, what the work's been done before, but also to help do some custom programming. Once we know how people are searching the portal, we already have a good idea of what keywords we're, we're expecting people to use and we're suggesting them. it's a controlled vocabulary and it will be very well organized, easily searchable and findable. I've got a background in librarianship and that's one of my focuses is to make sure this is truly functional and easy to use and just a great resource and streamlined. So definitely, if you have an hour, I'm going to set up a little Google calendar so you can just put your name in when you're available. And um, Norma, Jean, and I will be kind of assigning posts per day. And we'll, we'll reach out to whoever is available that day to say, hey, here's some posts. Can you look them over and, and uh, let us know when they're done? And then they, it's, we'll have a, a very easy set of instructions. Here's step one, step two, step three. Here are the things to look for. It's almost like a checklist and then good to go. So if you're interested, can you please put your name and your email in the chat? Or, um, and then I'll add you to my Google calendar and then you can fill in when you're available. And if you wanna do it the same hour every week, great. If you can only do it for one week, even that's okay. It'd be rather, we, I'd rather be overstaffed, overprepared than underprepared. Yeah, because really it can go, you know, one of two ways. It could be like, oh, it takes a while to get it up off the ground, or it could be like, boom, everybody's been waiting for this, right? You know, we're all spreading the word. So we could actually end up having, you know, lots of people wanting to make posts and, and we don't how we don't want them to have to wait for two, three, four days in order to for the post to show up. So yeah, if anybody can donate an hour or two um, a week to this, um, and maybe what we can even do, Marianne, is set up a Zoom where you walk, we'll, and we can record it, and you walk us through it so that people can see just how easy it is to do it, and or, you know how to use the calendar to 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 block off the time that you're willing to do it, and uh, like it's it's not going to be super complicated, right? So. Um, like, like Marianne said, it's you, any, anybody can pitch in and help with this. So that would be great. And, and I'll send out more emails based on that as well. Um, sorry here, I'm just looking at the chat. Um, Mary, did you get your speaker working? Are you able to say hello or? Uh, got yeah, I think I did, did I? Yes, you did, there you are. <laughs> Hi. Hi, where are you from? Um, so I'm in White Court right now, and uh, they have um, a, a group started here. So Grace told me to come to this meeting tonight. Awesome. Well, and so I'm brand new, but um, I'm on board for whatever you guys are doing. And I have previous experience working with children um, with different diagnoses and, and um, people with addictions and stuff. Great. That's great. Well, thank you so much for coming. So do, do you work with kids with special needs? Is that what you mean? Or uh, previously I have, I don't, I'm unemployed at the moment. So I have time. So I'm volunteering wherever you guys need me. That's fantastic. Um, now I, I noticed that you were, looked like you dropped us a couple of times. I, I let you back in. Did you just, were you here for the conversation we just had about the volunteer uh, positions that we're looking to fill? Did you catch Yes. That? That's why I, yeah, I threw my email in the Perfect. Section yeah. Perfect. And then I will add you to that, to our email list as well. Well, Perfect. welcome aboard. Thanks. We're really happy to have you. And I'm really happy to have all of you. Thanks for starting all of this. This is great. I, I actually really, you know, I think it's going to be fantastic. This is something that I'm very excited about, honestly. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I'm really excited about fleshing out what it's going to look like going forward and starting our own schools. And 
Um, did you have more that you wanted to add about the portal at all, Marianne? Or, uh, not at the moment. I think that pretty much covers it all. I am really curious, really interested in having this form of foundation where we can start to advertise for the round tables that I'm hoping we can have so we can do these in-depth discussions and facilitated sessions to help co-create a new learning future for our youth. And that will start, in my opinion, by imagining the society we want and then going backwards. Okay, what are the skills and competencies our youth are going to need to get there? Mm -hmm. And it's wide open. And it's going to be really interesting to see what kind of courses and who comes out of the woodwork to use our portal. And there will be support forums available and a link to resources page where people can suggest links and ways to connect homeschoolers can connect with other homeschoolers or special educators or people who want to just know more about educational pods or what are the legal realities of starting your own school. Those sorts of questions can be um, facilitated through our portal as well. Yeah, one of the things I learned this week, um, and it's true in BC and Alberta both, is that when you withdraw your children from the public school system, you can um, register register them as homeschoolers and then the government pretty much does like a hands-off type thing and you don't have to follow the curriculum um you don't get any money but they do, you don't get any interference then either um or you can register you can enroll them in homeschool uh, homeschooling so that's the difference registration versus enrollment if you enroll then you are associated with the homeschoolers and they help provide you with materials they kind of guide you. You get a little bit of money depending on what province you're in, um, but you are following the curriculum. The thing about being registered and doing it on your own is that there is some discussion about once they get into high school, whether or not the, the credits are, they, like they don't get a dogwood, but there are ways around that. Um, that's kind of what my research showed is that you can get into post-secondary provided we still have that, you know, 12 years down the road or whatever. But uh, anyways, there's, there are other options out there. And I was thinking about um, a conversation we have with Daniel a few weeks ago, where he said you had, if you had nine kids or less, you, you didn't have to be, and Simon, you can maybe help me on this. You didn't have to register with the government um, because it wasn't considered an independent school, but anything more than nine, then you are, you are, an ind independent school and you have to follow a lot of protocol and stuff and fill out all the forms and all that sort of jazz. So a thought I had was um, like, if you wanted to have 50 kids, could you not have one building and then lease each classroom to, an, to nine, nine students sort of thing so that they're all individual and they're not together? I don't know. I'm just thinking about how, are, how, how some of the ways that we can maybe get around these rules so that we actually can do things the way we want to do them. But anyways, anybody have any thoughts on that? I, I can share some, some thoughts with you. I've been debating the best way because right now we have this small school and we have a lot of interest in expanding new locations there. We have a significant waiting list compared to our enrollment. And so in Ontario, if you have more than five children, you're considered like a daycare or you would, you would have to be considered a school according to the Ministry of Education. Um, you could try come up, to come up with some clever ideas, but none of those have been tested. So ultimately you can do all kinds of things, but then, you know, when someone comes knocking on your door, how do you deal with it? Um, it's the same thing. I think Brian was the one who was talking on Monday about uh, common law and how to, you know, stand your ground uh, as a man and, you know, but then what happens when you are standing alone and they come knocking on your door and they strong arm you into doing whatever it is that, you know, or you try to take them to court and, you know, the court's all bought out anyway, so you don't have a leg to stand on. So I, I'm thinking of how to create a camp but run it, run it as a camp, right? Run it as an all year camp, but have like, who's to say that camps can't also provide learning. And when it comes to high school credits in order to get you into university, there's so many online options right now. The kids can just work online for a fraction of the time that they would spend in a high school 
the rest of the time they can be farming, they can be building, they can be sewing, they can be, they can be, be exploring their interests and developing their skills and then satisfy those requirements if those requirements are even necessary for them. If, if you know, if they, they plan on going into engineering or architecture and they need that diploma, they, they may require those credits. So if, if they do, that's not a problem because there are online options that are offered. Um, and if, you know, if those online options are costly, they, they can work for it. Uh, I don't think that children's time is valued nearly enough and they can definitely be earning money in, in some capacity. And the ideal scenario is for the school community to offer them those work opportunities so that they earn the money in order to pay off their credits. Um, so I can imagine that working. But as far as how to, um, how to run a school without being registered with the ministry, my best idea at the moment, like I had a, I had a thought way back when, when I received some liter some email from the ministry talking about this mandate and that requirement as far as COVID. And then at the bottom, it said, um, First Nation schools are Indigenous schools. This does not apply to federal run and Indigenous schools. So I, I started thinking, okay, well, why don't we just align with some Indigenous groups and just completely break away from the government? But um, that idea has not like it, I, I was all excited about it at first but then I learned more and more about how corrupt these indigenous groups are and how bought out they are so now my thought process is more um, how do we create a camp which I don't think and I need to learn more about this myself I need to do some research and find out about it but you have camps you have these farms that run school programs like how do you get start leaning more into that and you know, basically, you could call yourself not necessarily the school parents can register their kids as homeschool kids um, and then come up with a way of providing them with a daily experience. Because ultimately, what we're trying to do is provide kids with a really powerful, meaningful daily experience. Mm -hmm. right? And it doesn't matter what it's called. Um, that, that's the goal. So I'm, uh, I'm not sure the best approach, but as far as Ontario, uh, five children, you have five kids, you can register with the ministry. And perhaps like right now we're registered with the ministry and, and we're running our school how we like. So maybe registering with the ministry is not the worst thing to do. Um, you know, there are certain requirements as far as uh, the ministry of environment requires that you do lead testing, which is a big bunch of shit really. It's just sending in water samples every, every year um, unnecessarily really. Um, but I, I understand it. They're, trying to make sure that there's no lead in the water, but they're not testing for everything. They don't know how clean the water is. Like we have filtration systems all over our school that kids are drinking from. So what if there was a school that had pretty polluted water, but the lead levels are okay? Like what, what is the Ministry of Education actually testing for or environment rather? Um, so there's that requirement. There's demographic collection that you have to provide. So you got to collect all kinds of demographics about your students, number of teachers, teachers. So all this information has to be submitted to the ministry. You got to pay an annual fee, which is, you know, not much. It's like $120 or I don't know how much it is now, but um, it, it's it's small enough that it's not a big deal. And um, yeah, so I don't know what the best option is, but my feeling is, and, and I've seen people do this, where they just start, <laughs> they just bring a bunch of families together and they have a program and they just they just start right and they do it out of their homes i know someone who um was a little bit up north kind of in you know in more rural area they've got a nice piece of land they transform their basement it's a really nice house uh so they transform their basement and now they they started with five kids 10 kids 15 30 40 they're, they're probably like 30 40 kids and they run these programs for like three hours plus three hours plus three hours so if you don't have i think the number is can't remember the exact amount of hours but if you have kids at a location without parental supervision for more than a certain amount of time they basically consider your school but if you have a program that's three hours that runs and then another three hour program so you can kind of combine the two sometimes the ministry will have people like usually the ministry acts when there's a complaint 
Otherwise, they don't really bother you. So uh, unless you're a daycare, uh, we had experience with daycare where it was really unpleasant because they really breathe down your neck. And I feel bad for the daycares because they're not really mm -hmm. able to give the kids the best experience because they're constantly having to deal with this crap from the ministry, constantly dealing with all of this red tape and paperwork forms. Um, yeah, so I don't want to keep going on and on because I can talk about this for a long time. But if there are specific questions, I mean, the Ministry of Education has a website here in Ontario where there's frequently asked questions. Those are perfect. That's the page I send anybody to who's interested in starting a private school because it, it outlines everything to do about uh, health and safety regulation, um, you know, how you assess, how a school can create its own policies for assessing special needs, how basically the ministry does not want to be accountable for these private schools. And it's like buyer beware, parents have to make the decision. So, which I appreciate, you know, it's like the ministry doesn't want to get too involved. Uh, the only time they're involved, you know, and, and they scrutinize the schools is when they're giving out high school credits, which mm -hmm. is why I think, you know, outsourcing that service would be the best way to go as far as creating a, an experience for kids who are in high school. Yeah, I was just I was just thinking while you were talking, it's like if the whole three hour thing, again, you could all be in one building, but with different areas I want, and I wonder if, it, if that would be like a sneaky way of getting through it well three hours here and then your kid goes over here especially if the kids are registered as homeschoolers because then the government doesn't get involved right so James did you have something you wanted to add there you're muted Okay, it was um, what I wanted to talk about was the portals coming out soon. And um, a lot of parents will be pulling their children out of school to be homeschooled. So a lot of parents are go like want to know, okay, where's the best place to start? What are my options? So a few years ago, I put together a list of wouldn't it be nice if these were like courses taught in the new system and the new earth. So I compiled a list of 19. And some of them can be turned into mini modules that could be put um, as portals on for parents as a starting point for real life development. I'm going to share the list. So some of them will be mini courses. Some of them you'll be like, well, you can't turn that to a mini course. You have to like sort of go out and do that. But uh, I'm going to go over the list and I can send it to everybody afterwards as well. But uh, I'll just do it right now. <clears throat> okay, I'm gollow up. So number one, unique individual creativity and perception. So thinking for yourself and not having others think for you. Number two, Budgeting, saving, and finances, creating your financial future in advance. Number three, holistic nutrition and cooking from scratch. Let food be thy medicine, medicine be thy food. Number four, perceiving, quote, failure as lessons to learn. Failure is an opportunity to learn what works and what does not work and to grow in strength. Number five, fluid conversation with eye contact and listening skills promotes higher levels of confidence. Uh, number six, logic, analytical, critical reasoning to become a leader rather than blindly following others. Seven, character development, creating a strong sense of morals, ethics, and honesty. Eight, negotiation skills, how to understand how to avoid being taken advantage of and how not to take advantage of others. Number nine, first aid, don't be scared, be prepared. Number 10, self-protection and self-defense for confidence, personal safety, and security. 11, uh, house and basic car repair and maintenance, don't be scared, be prepared. Uh, number 12, priority management and productivity, creating life uh, efficiently. Number 13, etiquette which is manners and respect. Uh, number 14, social skills, communicate with compassion and confidence. Number 15, research and analytical skills, question everything and draw your own conclusions only after investigating yourself. Number 16, how to selectively create real friendships, know who to welcome and why and who to uh, potentially avoid. Number 17, integrity, only attract others with high integrity. 18, balance giving and receiving in all relationships. And lastly, uh, number 19, self-reliance, being able to sustain yourself without being dependent on others. And uh, so those are things like I could turn into mini modules, but uh, I just wanna throw that out there as possible directions uh, as tools. Those are awesome. Those are really amazing. I'd love it if you shared those. Sure. Okay. All right. I could turn. I could turn like some of those into like 15 minute modules. The parent can watch it with their child and really, to really start putting things together. But these are things that will really make a difference in them. Uh, you know, tapping into their deepest levels of creativity and 
creative power and potential. Yeah, I also think it's like just a really great starting point for a parent or a, a teacher as well, just to kind of go, oh, that's, and they could expand on it. Like, and this could be something, James, that you put on the portal as well, right? Like, so I was feeling it's a possibility for sure. Oh, absolutely it is. Um, and before we go on, Anna, are you new here tonight? Hi, everybody. Hi. Hello, Norma. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you for joining us. I'm sorry I'm late. Um, that's, that's okay. Do you want to tell us where you're from? And so what I, you're I'm in um, Surrey. Mm -hmm. And um, I was teaching for a school district until last year. So I've left the system. So right now I am... Um, teaching privately mainly and we're trying to get a homeschooling group together and possibly start a home a farm school eventually that's the ultimate goal so we're working on that at the moment we're trying to look for funding so applying for grants and this is something that we'll just set up maybe twice a week or three times a week so some of those um, things that you were mentioning, James, thank you for sharing that because um, uh, with the food particularly and the, we're looking to do some um, outdoor survival courses as well, um, building shelters, fires, cooking over fires, not making, you know, lots of different things with caring for animals eventually. So the connection with the earth so that's what we're we're looking to to establish but it's a slow process um getting people on board but um yeah that's that's where i'm at so we um we're working on that in surrey at the moment and i i won't go back into the system even if things change i don't trust anything anymore that's going on so i decided to to leave my job that was brave of you i did i did the same thing at the end of last school year it was like that was that was enough for me and and uh struck out on my own as well so i i have a a, a business where i run workshops for parents and for educators teaching them how to teach kids to read and spell i'm an orton gillingham specialist reading oh specialist. yeah yeah um so that would be, this portal will be awesome for you, Anna. This is great. You'll be able to get your word out there and gather people together because there, I think there's going to be a lot of parents that are looking for exactly what you're offering. Um, new and, uh, sorry, I've got the names here. Crystal, yeah, same, same deal. So thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank uh, you for having me. Oh, I'm so glad you came. Hi, Ambreen. Thanks for joining us. Brian, is this yes, a joke? Yes. Um, Simon was talking about uh, something that the Indigenous were doing like, as far as education. And this has been an avenue that has been a little bit of a concern for me on a regular basis when you hear <clears throat> that, say, the Indians are able to do this and to do that, and we are not. And that is really discrimination. Whatever they should be able to do, we should be able to do the exact same thing. There should be no separation of rights. We're all equal under the constitution, under the bill of rights. So I just wanted to more or less encourage, I don't know how successful it would be, but if you find an outline that you wanna run with, I don't know if it would be successful and you might have a lot of trouble with it, but uh, I would encourage you to run with it and almost follow the exact guidelines that the Indigenous are using and say, well, they're doing it. Why can't I? This is fair. This is equal. This is you're discriminating against me. With that, I'll yield. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. <laughs> discrimination is discrimination really, isn't it? But um, I, I, I feel like we're, we're going to step away from the system anyways. It's just a matter of time and how we do it. Um, I, I think 
I, I think they're going to have their hands full and maybe we'll be able to do more than, than we realize that way, right? As far as flying under the radar. Uh, Marianne. Hi, thanks. Um, I had a quick question for Anna. We actually haven't talked much about grant funding sources for alternative educators other than what you might be able to get out of the government. So I'd really appreciate it if you wouldn't mind submitting any sources that you have found or any ideas that you have, or I know people would be very interested in that, but I also realize you might not want to share because you don't want competition for the grants. <laughs> But hopefully we can come to a happy medium there because I'm sure people would be very interested to know sources of funding. Um, and I know that Simon had mentioned a really innovative one where he started up his current school with the birthday party after school service and after school programs and the after school camps, weekend camps. Brilliant. I think people would really appreciate a page of, you know, funding sources or innovative ways to start up your own school. Yes, I'd, I'd be happy to, to share that. We last year we looked at the DL model first. So getting the distributed learning funding, we had to have seven students. You've probably already been over this. I don't want to repeat that ground, but um, we, you know, we didn't we get seven. Sorry, Marianne. Sorry. We haven't talked about grants at all. We don't know anything about this. No, we haven't. The, we haven't the, talked about the DL either. So. So that's not a that's not a grant. So that would be somebody who registers through a distributed learning program. So there are schools around BC and presumably Ontario as well. Um, so uh, schools like Island Discovery, um, Self Design, you may have heard of Self Design. So there's a certain um, uh, you know, price tag, if you want, on a, on a student. So you can get, a family can get a certain amount of funding. And then if the student has special needs as well, the funding changes. Um, so anyway, I can put something together. I don't want to take up too much of your time if you've been over some of this, but I could put together what we know so far about distributed learning funding homeschool funding because that's different and then what we're the stage we're at now because we've just started to apply for grants this is very new for for there's only three people in this group that is trying to get this thing going so we're really start you know we're we're still learning so we will definitely pass on anything we that's find awesome. out that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, do you have a blog going or any other website where you're documenting any of this? Because we could link to that in the portal as well. I'm not that tech savvy, Marianne. So no, I'm just sort of, it, for me, it's always bits of paper. Um, <laughs> so, but I can collate it and send it to you. I, if, it's, if it's easier yeah. for you, we can have a Zoom. You can tell me I can type it real fast. That's lovely. Thank you. Um, I, I just want to make a comment about the grants because I, I don't know much about them. I've applied to a couple of grants in the past. Um, one of our teachers earned, uh, she got a grant for I think $700 for building um, some machine that would extrude plastic out of recycled plastic and turn it into filament. So that's about the extent of experience I have with grants, but I get the sense, I could be completely wrong, but I get the sense that focusing on community building, getting more and more people involved, there are people out there that are extremely resourceful, that are very against what's happening, and will begin to put their money into investments that will not yield the kind of returns that most business people would be uh, trying to get if they were investing in some in the stock market or something else because it hits home especially people with children they're they're going to want to invest in something they'll secure land with the idea that the land value will will be a comfortable place for their money and if the business does extremely well great if the business survives great if the business you know struggles for a little bit they're okay dealing with it so you have you have this power in numbers where the larger you grow your community the more investment opportunity will come your way like right now in my position i mean i'd be happy to take a grant but that's not what's gonna grow 
the school that I'm working on. So, and I also think about all that time and energy that goes into writing the grant, preparing the grant, how competitive it is. It's like uh, playing the lottery, you know, and, and sometimes the lottery is a little fixed on top of it. So you end up with this situation where, you know, you're putting a lot of energy. It's all about opportunity costs. And so you can put so much energy into these grants and hope and belief that you, you're going to get this grant. But the sure way of securing a future for your school is to build a community around it and get the right people involved. And you don't know where that person will come from. Like I, I, the investor that initially invested in the school that we're operating now, which happened in November, 2010, I met him in 2009 through a parent that wasn't going to be an investor, but she knew somebody and she was really passionate about what I was doing. And so she put me in touch with him and one thing led to another. So you don't know how it's going to develop, but it will. If you put enough energy into building a community, you know, you start off with three people and it'll grow to five and everything starts off slow. It's like the hockey stick analogy, right? You're working, you're working, you don't see much of a change, but then eventually you hit a point where things just all of, it's like a spring, you know, you're pushed, you're putting all this energy in. And it's almost like you're moving backwards instead of forwards, but then eventually there's this there's this action that happens and you spring forward. So that, that's just my perspective. I, I try not to put a lot of faith into grants and, you know, kind of government handouts and things like that. Um, you know, I, I'll take them if they're available, of course. And I, I don't mind dedicating a certain amount of time if I see an attractive grant. Uh, but again, it's not my area of expertise. So somebody might argue otherwise and say, no, that's crazy. There's all this free money. You register a not-for-profit organization business. You know, there's all this free money. No one's taking it. So I've heard people argue that point. Uh, I just, you know, I guess see it a little differently, maybe at the moment, maybe something will change in the future. Well, and we all are also, you know, our long-term goal is to step away from the government as well, right? In Life Force Canada, that's sort of our goal. But, um, and I've been hearing a lot of rumblings about the whole DL, right? That they're changing how it's going to run and how they're, how much money they're operating. Like I, like everybody I know that's been, that's involved in um, DL is, is scared right now that things are changing. So I don't know, maybe you know more about that. I don't really know the particulars, but um, uh, Marianne? You have your hand up, hon. Sorry, you... I just didn't take it down. Oh, sorry, Anna? Um, so I just wanted to mention that we're using the grant to just as a springboard, just to start off because we didn't get the DL funding. So this is just a starting point for us. Um, so I really appreciate what you're saying, Simon, about as that grows, you know, more and more people come on board and then we have more ways of funding this. And then the goal is definitely to step away from um, maybe to even tap into property taxes somehow. I don't know, but because uh, <laughs> they're not going to be paying for, for what we need them to be paying, paying for. So. Yeah, so that's that's where we're at. It's just to, as a, as literally to get some equipment and to get going. We just want to get a tent, basically, <laughs> and some some supplies, and start from there. Yeah. Well, and that's you know, on the portal, like there are search. You can do a search uh, post as well where you're looking for stuff, and you know you never know. You put something like that out there. Hey, we're looking for this size tent, and get, you never know, someone might be, have it in their shed and looking for a good home for it and whatever it is that you're looking for, school supplies and any of those kind of things. So it's, it's worth trying it out that way too. Okay, anybody else have any comments about any of that? Any other ideas about how we can start expanding our ideas and getting together and Marianne, any ideas? I would be very interested in setting up a series of round tables, as I call them, which would be a chance for interested people to come together, and it could be online, it could be with Zoom, to discuss, okay, what do we want our future society to look like? But I have a feeling that that is too premature, like people can't 
think that far ahead. They're in survival mode right now. They're like, ah, I have to take my kids out. I have to get them. How am I get them into university? They're still thinking university is a big thing that has to be done in order to get a good career. And so I'm curious to know whether people's ideas on what do you think needs to happen and when do you think we can start reimagining our education system and how could that happen? Any, anybody got any responses to that? Do you think we should just run the portal for about a year and then put out a call for round table or should we start right away? I think every day that a child is stuck in uh, these unhealthy toxic schools is a tragedy. So the faster people can move, the more we can pull away from that, the better, like every day. Every day there's a deterioration of an entire generation of children. And, you know, like oftentimes people talk about health as something that is never stable. You're either getting healthier or you're getting sicker. Either you're moving in one direction or another. You can't just, you know, sit on the fence. So e either our children are growing with confidence and, and developing a healthy mindset or, or they're going in the other direction. There, there's no real in between. So I, I don't know, I, I wanna do everything I can. And I know everyone else here also wants to do what they can. So I don't know what, uh, I mean, just connecting people, just connecting people at different stages of their journey. If you own a school, I know there are a lot of people out there that own schools um, that uh, are similar, similar minded and you know, maybe, maybe they think they're alone, or maybe there's just not enough connection, there's not enough cohesion happening. So and then there's going to be groups of people who are frustrated that want to start a school, there's going to be groups of people who potentially are investors who want to, you know, fund something. Uh, there are people who just have time on their hands that are willing to write posts or go and do some social media marketing or whatever it is, I don't know. So there. Or, or people developing courses like uh, when James spoke about those courses, I, you know, it's brilliant. I've been thinking about all these different possibilities for a very long time. Um, how, how to, uh, you know, use technology to motivate and, and save time for children. Like how do they learn something in a shorter period of time? How do, how do they learn to memorize things? And a lot of people talk about memory, like it's a bad thing. And yeah, in, in a lot of ways, like rote memorization is, is not the best way to learn, but memorization and memory, like strong memory is important. They're missing that. They're not like my mom can rhyme off like pages of text that she learned 30 years ago. You know, and where is that? Like, where is that discipline? And the mind, the mind needs that exercise. So we're, we're missing out on all these amazing things that kids could be doing. So e even if they are stuck in, a, in some school that's not the healthiest option for them, maybe in their after school, they could be gaining, you know, the confidence and, and support that they need. So, that, I mean, there's, there's all these, there are all these different people. And how do you, I keep, you know, uh, thinking of how to bring people together, how to connect. Like if I have a chance to connect with anybody who reaches out to me, I'll put my time in and try to find time and make it happen. So um, I don't know. I love the idea of the portal because that's the, that's the whole concept is to bring people together, right? Um, so as soon as you launch it, I mean, who knows what'll happen? Maybe it'll take on a life of its own and people will just start connecting and then we just channel and, and observe what's going on and, and see how we can bring you know like connect people who are at different stages or I don't know community events or how, how to get people connections yeah I, I agree do you think do you think people would appreciate uh almost like a school profile page like what's going on out there kind of page sure. And people can say, this is what we're going to try. We're going to see how it goes. And this is what we're doing. And these are the courses we're going to offer. And we're going to start a farming thing. Yep. Do you think that would be worth, worth doing? I think that would be worth doing, figuring out ways of getting schools to not think competitively, but think collaboratively. Mm -hmm. Like, how do we work together? How do we support each other? How do we get our kids connected with each other? And, and ultimately, it should be the kids driving this. You know, and I'm not talking about three, four year olds. I'm talking about like the eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 high school students. 
those kids should be driving it. They should be coming up with their own media platforms. They should be coming up with their own versions of Druthers. They should be coming up with their own courses. Like it shouldn't be us adults coming up. We, we can support, we can definitely, like we have experience. We, we know more about, you know, maybe plant medicine and we know a little bit more about cooking. We know these things, but the information's out there. It's about them putting in their time, those 10,000 hours to become masters and things. Like they should be starting that at, at such a young age. Um, you know, and then they're walking around little 15, 16 year old masters who put in 10,000 hours in, into growing and farming and nutrition. And, you know, that that's what needs to happen. And so, yeah, like schools connecting. I don't know if there's a way to get kids. I know the idea of kids on, on social media or connecting with others is is such a, you know. Um, that's pitfalls. Pitfall. Yeah, like, you know, people, people are worried that their kids are going to be taken advantage of, or there's predators out there, etc. But ultimately, like, they should be the ones connecting as much as the adults. You know, I want my daughter out there. She's only seven years old, but I, I want her connecting with other kids in other schools, learning about what those kids are doing and how, how things, you know, and, and learning from each other, because they learn so well from each other. Yeah, I was just, I was just thinking, you know, one of the spots on the portal is a blog section. And you know, it doesn't have to just be Marianne and I writing blog thing. It can be anybody, right? So yeah. um, that, I mean, that could work for the people that are, hey, this is what we're doing. We're gonna, we wanna have, we have an acre and this is our plan. They could write it as a blog entry or we could have a kids section for blogs too, right? Work, and that's a way for kids to connect and, and talk about where they are, what they're doing, what they're interested in, what they've discovered, what they're building, whatever that might be something too. Um, Anna Maria, you've been waiting a long time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, sorry, I have to also go to the next meeting, oh, um, the Vancouver plan one. But anyway, uh, I just wanted to respond to what Marianne was saying. Um, and I think that's a great idea. I, I for one, don't think we need to wait a whole year. I think that we should do it sooner rather than later, get get the juices going. Uh, I'm really excited to uh, participate and get my hands on a project and, and create it from backwards for, or from forwards to backwards because I'm, I really believe that we are the people that are gonna set the foundation for the children to run with it. And that's what I see our role as parents and adults uh, to basically help them with the foundation of it. Uh, but the, I totally agree with Simon that I, my daughter is 15. I mean, she's already in youth. Um, you know, she's teach, she's teaching younger kids. She tutors younger kids. She's she's involved in some community things, and it's wonderful to see when they get excited about a project. And I think that would be a fantastic idea to get um, you know the youth involved in projects. Uh, to create something. I think it's amazing what the kids can come up with there. I, I think we can learn much more from them. And I mean, we all know that already, but I, I, I would definitely say I would love to start the thing that the, the circles, I, I, what did you call them, Marianne? Circle round discussions. Table. Round that's table. it. That's it. Round table. Oh, round table. I remembered round. Anyway, so I would love to, to start that as soon as possible and um, start really actually putting down some sort of a framework uh, and I mean, obviously it's going to take time and it's going to take resources and people and all that. But I mean, I, I don't see why we, we really can't start sooner rather than later. And at the same time, do all these other wonderful things that are going to be on the portal. But I'm very, very um, excited and anxious to sort of do things a different way. Uh, that's why I'm here. I'm here to participate and build something that's that's not necessarily reinventing the wheel. We can definitely, we don't have to throw, throw the, what is it, the baby out with the bathwater. We can definitely take the good things that we've, we've gotten in our education system, but inject some new things and a different approach. So that's all I had to say. Thank you so much. And I yield. Yeah, and I, and I agree with you that these things are gonna take time. So the sooner we start, the better, I think, because it, it, they are gonna take time. So thank you very much, Anna Maria. Thanks for coming tonight. And you're heading off to the Vancouver uh, committee meeting. All right, say hello to everyone. Thanks again. Uh, Grace, thanks for waiting. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so. I don't know if this is the right idea or not, but for for Whitecourt and Woodlands community, what if 
we put our list together in this community of all the people that are homeschooling and, and their pods, and then um, actually send them out a, uh, a, a notice about your website and, and uh, start to mold them into what we could do as a school in our area. Like, I mean, you're talking about communication and thinking and also special needs. I mean, and just, I mean, work from there at a ground level. Yeah, boots on the ground. That's exactly what I was saying earlier, right? It's like, how can we start spreading the word out there? So are you part of an organization or a community of, of homeschoolers that you know of? Or, or is that something that you think you can start working towards finding out? There's organizations that are already in place that you can approach or? Well, I've made contact with uh, a, a one teacher that's here that has a pod. I know some homeschoolers that are here. I know some parents that have already just taken their kids out this year. I mean, I, I, I'm a, and I've taught homeschool, you know, I've done homeschooling. So, uh, I, I mean, I have a little bit of, of education so I can, you know, talk that language too, right? Um, but I just see it as, as it's a matter of pulling them together in order to create uh, a school that we want here. At the same time, uh, plugging them into into uh, what you guys are doing, which would be phenomenal, which then if every community did that, then we would have that cohesiveness, right? That we're looking for. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think that that's kind of the eventual plan is to come up with like a basic template that can be used across the nation, right? Tweaked for the communities and you know where they're at and what they want to focus on, but just something that Okay, here's a really good basic template that we can use across the nation that I think is sort of the idea, not to be forced on anybody or on any, any of the committees or communities, but um, to, as a resource. So, yes. yeah, and bringing people together, that's the whole, that's the whole idea. It's, it, that is the, the trick, isn't it? It's the hard thing to do. It's part of what we're doing here tonight, right? What we're yeah. trying to do. Oh. Thank you very much, Grace. You're welcome. Does anybody else have anything else they wanted to add about that? Yeah, I think that um, every time I've been on, there is there is such a great energy with what we are talking about. It it offers hope. Mm -hmm. It's just it, it's just very exciting to know that there's hope for a different future for our children, a uh, way of education because being in the education system in a high school where I'm on a daily basis, I'm seeing how the children are being disserviced and how some of them are not being serviced at all. Um, it's very frustrating. So this is, it's very exciting. And um, it's, it's not often you can come across ideas and people who, I'm not sure the the right word for it, but it just feels like this is the this is the right thing. This is the right way to go. I'm afraid of leaving the school system because, you know, that's. I mean, I have my side business, but then I have benefits and things like that. But I don't really want to be in there. Mm. Uh, this so the sooner I think we get this going, and other people I imagine would feel the same would have the same impact of this exciting, inspiring uh, new way of thinking, which is probably a very old way of thinking, right? But I think the sooner it's out there, the more people can, um, can feel the positivity and hope for a different future. So that's, that's my thing. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And that's, that's a nice thing to say. And I think you're right. There are a lot of people that are feeling a bit um, hopeless right now, desperate. I think there's a lot of desperation out there, which is such a low energy. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's the whole goal here. And, and a lot of people are not, um, well, this, that's not the right thing to say is generalizing, but not everyone is educated in education or the possibilities of different types of education or what you know what is possible 
all they know is, especially a lot of the immigrant families, all they know is, okay, well, you go to school, you're supposed to learn, blah, blah, blah. And it's not always the case. So there are a lot of people who don't even know that there are options. So if, if options are presented to them, I think it would be a very exciting to see how many people, of course, you know, there'll be people who don't agree with this, but there's, I think there's a lot of people who are looking for options. And the fact that there is an alternate, um, just, just an option for them. Mm -hmm. I, you know what? I would say that there are a lot of teachers out there that don't know that there are options. That's, mm -hmm. that's my experience of, of nearly 20 years in the classroom is that teachers are told what to teach. They're told how to teach it. And um, they just kind of do it. They fall into line, right? And, and that's a generalization. Obviously, there are some fantastic teachers out there. But I think more often than not, you know, they're told this is how you do it. And they do it, whether they're finding out, whether they're finding success with it or not, they're doing what they're told. So if we can introduce something new and it's and it's working and we're and we're we're watching that magic happen, I think it'll it's gonna catch on too, right? It's gonna expand past just yeah. our group. It's it's going, we're gonna grow because beautiful things do, right? That's you do this every day too, what you're saying about teachers and not knowing and about an alternate way of teaching. Teachers are using textbooks that aren't necessarily the ones they want to use, but they're told to use them. Or they're, they're told that this is what they need to teach and how they need to teach it. They don't agree, but they do it anyway. Yeah. So yeah. I think that it's- um, a lot of, There's a lot of conformity and falling into line, both of the educators and of the children, right? So yeah. that's not what we, that's not the generation we want or what we wanna see in the generations coming up. Right. Grace, did you see your hand is up, hon? Did you have something more? You just forgot. Oh, I'm, I forgot to take it down. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Okay. So I don't think I posted the YouTube channel. So I'm going to do that. I have to find it here. Um, anybody who joined us a little bit late, uh, we are going to record our meetings from now on. And then I'm going to post them on this um, YouTube channel. So it would be fantastic if everybody just took a moment to um, ah, go onto that channel and subscribe. Because right now, if you search Life Force Canada Education Think Tank, you won't find it. I just tried it. It doesn't come up. So we don't have, I don't know why, it, but it's not coming up. There's a, a million other ones, but not that one. So if you would just subscribe to that, even if you want to turn off your notifications, that would just help us out. I'm going to um, start putting it out there on Facebook and stuff as well, just so people know that there's a way to access the meetings, because I've, I've had a lot of people that want to come to the meeting, but the timing isn't good for them, right, depending on where they are in the nation. So um, there's that. Um, what else did I want to talk about before I let you go? Um, there's other ways that people can get involved as well. And Marianne was helping me out with this. You can join our education portal work team. We talked about that a little bit earlier. We are gonna need volunteers and um, it's, it's as simple as, as uh, signing up on this Google calendar that Marianne has set up. Do you wanna post the, this, the uh, link for that Marianne or do you wanna wait till next week? I'm gonna wait till next week, but put your name in the chat and I'll make sure you're invited. I have to invite you into the calendar. Yeah, so if you're interested and can volunteer even an hour through the week just to help us, and this is just vetting the posts that people put on, right? So whether it's they're listing a service or they're, or they're searching for a service, um, it's just us going through, making sure they've met the criteria and then submitting it and, and posting it. So it's not going to be hard work. It's just kind of tedious. We'll do like a little Zoom tutorial and show you the ins and outs of it. But uh, if things go well, we're going to need help, Marianne and I. <laughs> and, uh, and that would be great. So Ombreen, it's literally you can choose when, right? You just go onto the calendar and you put in the, and it might end up you won't have any work to do in that hour or, you know, you might have lots. 
Um, you can attend, anybody who hasn't here yet attended our Monday, our national calls, the Life Force Canada calls. Those happen on Monday at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, they're great. They often have guest speakers. They, we always have a topic of um, information that's super valuable, informative. The support is amazing, knowing that we are all together here. Um, Brian, did you want to interject? I was listening to Aubrey and uh, just uh, wanted to elaborate on a few things that I've seen in here. Like there's a lot of very, very talented people in here, but the skill sets are different. Mm -hmm. And it just looks like a fabulous team with everybody together. And, uh, you know, um, everybody working together I just see there's a lot of strength in this team and with that I was going to yield but there was one more thing that I wanted to say that uh, Anna was late so she'll have to stay in detention <laughs> <laughs> she says no <laughs> thanks Brian um what else was i gonna say oh um there are other think tanks as well and for anybody who's interested in getting involved in other ways there's the health and wellness there's media energy sourcing agriculture uh security i can't think of all the ones um i know that marianne knows them all because she's um uh, but brian i think you posted the link for the other think tanks didn't you i can put it in again oh thanks so much i appreciate that and of course, then there are plan councils um, being that are forming within your communities, even now as we speak, right? Um, Calgary has got one that's just lifting off the ground. We have one in Vancouver, but there's one in, in Westminster district that's being set up as well. I don't know about the other provinces, but I'm sure it's the same everywhere. So if you wanted to join your local plan council and get involved there as well, that would be great. Um, and yeah, I think, I think that's it for tonight. Oh, also United News Network. This is really exciting, actually. The United News Network, we now have a Canadian section and we have two Canadian anchor people. So Dwayne Tossin is one of them and Jen, I don't know her last name, but they're, they're phenomenal. They do them like every couple of weeks or a week and a half, I'm not sure. They have like a whole long segment that gets you up to date on things that are happening within, within Canada. Uh, it looks super professional, it's fabulous. Um, and then there's the United News Net Network as well, which is global. So you can find out what's going on in Life Force Canada Global and the Speak Project videos on YouTube are, um, are great, especially the Live at Five and the weekly meetings that um, Tank and Kim have uh, are posted on there as well. So am I missing anything? Can anybody think of anything I'm missing? I think I've covered most of it. But uh, yeah, check out the Life Force Canada and the whole thing. Come on a Monday call if you can, because they are really, really great. And so next week we should have some, we should be able to show you the, the uh, website, the portal, which is exciting, right? And we'll have the calendar ready for people to actually put the hours that they're able to to volunteer for and we should be able to set up um little tutorials on how to do um how to how to vet the posts and stuff right so it's not common. right right and just so you know i have to invite them to the calendar so if i have the emails now i can send you the invite link and get busy on those tutorials right so if you're if you're interested in um volunteering anytime at all or you think you might down the road even if you just put a, a hell yes in there then we'll know and with together with your email address if i don't have it or even if i do have it actually because sometimes the email addresses don't tell me um your name so so i don't see a lot of hell yeses <laughs> yeah and James, even if you don't share all the uh, content of those things, if you could even share the names of those that you had, they were, they're fantastic. They're such a good oh, Sure. Well, I could, I could email it to you and you can email it out if you want to everybody. 
Sure, that would be awesome. That would really yeah. be very okay. appreciated. Those yeah, each one of those could be expanded upon quite well. I know like self-protection, obviously, you could get at-home videos, or you, but it's best to go out and learn out there as well. But yeah, there's a lot we can do with that. Yeah, no, and it's a, it's a great thing for you to put on the portal too. And I think it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Okay. So any last words? Everybody, we're good for tonight. Thank you all so much for coming. And um, uh, honestly, we're, we're forming a wonderful community here and I'm super excited to be a part of it. And I actually get like uh, truth bumps when I think about um, where we're going because I think it's gonna be fantastic. And it's gonna be hard work and, and that's okay because all everyone here is our hard workers. So we can do it. So thanks everyone. Same place, same time next week. Yep. As always. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Thanks. Have a great week. Thank you. You as well. Take care, everybody.